more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Top billing. I right, top billing. People want to know why I call Florida head coach Dan Mullen the hacker. I call that man the hacker because he will literally find a weak point in your defense and exploit it. And it's not something that's generic. It's going to be a game-specific approach, meaning it can change team by team. That's why Florida's offense to me looks different each week or there's different guys who are featured each week, whereas some of these other teams, you pretty much know what you're going to get. It's going to be cut and dry. Maybe two or three players will be targeted the entire game and this and that. Not at Florida. He will do something different, and it's something that you didn't see before. He reminds me of combat sports participants who are able to adjust on the fly. Almost like Stipe Miocic versus Daniel Cormier. That's just a good example right there if you guys know anything about MMA. Uh, in the first fight, DC knocked Stipe Miocic out. In the second fight, Daniel Cormier was whipping Stipe Miocic's ass until Miocic caught him with a body shot. Now, once he caught him with the first body shot, he saw the reaction he got, and he was like, hmm, this is this is a little bit different, right? Kept connecting with him, kept softening his stool, and you can see the stool coming out Daniel Cormier's trunks. He was lighting him up with body shots on his way to knocking him out. That's what I saw with Florida with this particular concept here. Now, check this out. You would think a team with a great defensive mind like Coach Kirby Smart would be able to adjust to this, but he had different ways of actually running this particular concept, right? Just a, a will concept, getting willed up the field. Sometimes it's not even necessarily a will. It's a, just a pretty much a vertical approach from out of the backfield. But check this out right here. You're working to the boundary here. You got a three-by-one set going on. Uh, we'll go ahead and diagram it out right here. If you have... The middle right here this would be Kadarius Tony in the tight slot. Uh, he's running a post. Got great Kyle Pitts right here. He's just getting seamed up the field. Trayvon Grimes on the outside running an in-breaking route. But here's where the cheese is going to come from, right here in the boundary. So it's a quick hitting play. It reminds me of almost that concept that LSU was running last year that they kept getting vertical on everybody with. It's pretty much running the distraction here. You're going to have Jacob Copeland on a sharp slant. But he's just meant to kind of occupy this area right here for whomever's in the backfield to get wheeled up the field. Now, they do a great job with this because there's a different couple of ways you could throw this. You can you can hit them right out of the field, right out of the backfield when you see this happening, or you can wait and let him get down the field some and then throw it while he's already in motion. It just depends on what type of coverage you get here. So this wasn't necessarily man coverage. It's man coverage. It appears on the inside and zone on the outside. So you'll have a vertical approach here by Tyson Campbell working back here. Same thing with the outside guys here. You're going to have a single high safety and Chris Smith there. But you'll have Monty Rice trying to travel out the backfield, or at least this is his area. He tries to travel with Naquan Wright and ends up getting picked. And then the rest is all history. You can run it here. Bang, that's the action right there. It's the only thing you needed to see right there, that that was it right there. Now, if they had a banjoed approach to where they would switch this off, which they should have, Monty Rice would take Jacob Copeland. Tyson Campbell would just be concerned about whatever is going his way. It makes me think that Tyson Campbell actually didn't get the memo on this because then he does travel vertical up the field. And look at that. Toasted, right? Butter on your toast. Look at the action again right here. Right? Look at Copeland. He's looking like he's not really running anything, to be honest with you. He knew exactly what they what was going to happen right there, and he's just meant to muddy the waters. Naquan right up. He could have hit him right here and then let him run, but that may have stopped his momentum. He let him run up field a little bit, which is even smarter. Get that momentum going, and Naquan Wright is much faster than a Monty Wright, so able to burn him stride for stride there. Nothing happening. All right, so remember, he's the hacker. There was some type of encryption that he decoded with Georgia's linebacker core where he figured they could not run with his running backs out of the backfield or even tight ends out of the backfield. So being able to isolate those guys and get splash plays off of them is typical Dan Mullen the hacker way. So on this one right here, this is probably my favorite one. He's going to pull Richard Garage here, run into a deep set. He's going to have... I believe Kadarius Tony right here in the tight slot running an out and up. So he originally wants to work with this. As you can see right here, there's help over the top with that. 
but he does recognize that to be man coverage. So then all he has to do is come back side right here, and you're going to have, remember, this is going to be play action as well. So play action to Malik Davis, and he comes through isolating against one N'Kobe Dean. N'Kobe Dean is a great player. He's the hall monitor. He does not want you running anywhere, but he cannot run and cover a guy like Malik Davis. It's just not happening, Captain. So this is a very good play right here. So I said, giving you your medicine in different applications. Play action. Malik kind of sold it and then was gone. Hell of a throw. Hell of a throw. Come on. Let's go again. Front facing play action fake. He is originally looking over here. So if it's man coverage, N'Kobe Dean originally is going to bite on that run fake. Obviously, he wants to get the runner. That's going to be his first MO there. Kyle Trask, you cannot deal with the Trask at hand when he's looking downfield here. Help over the top with that out and up from Kadarius Tony. All right, so maybe he could have gone there, but, you know, if I throw it into double coverage when you got this coming backside, you can see right here. If it's even, he's leaving against a guy like N'Kobe Dean. Uh, Travis has to do. He hit that back foot, immediately knew where he wanted to go. Ooh, man, look at this. Look at this breach right here by your man Stone Forsyth against Aziz Ojolari. So he barely got that bad boy away. But look at the throw. Great arc. The trajectory on it was nasty. Bang. Dope. Got to love it, man. The hacker. All right, now check this out. This is a pure script read, meaning the defense has shown itself, has shown its script by, you can see the three by one here, just like that other one. This time, the one is going to be Kyle Pitts. And look who's across from Kyle Pitts. It's going to be who? Strong safety, your man Lewis Seen right here. So this is a pure man coverage indicator. Of course, Tyson Campbell. All right, with the tight slot, you got in the middle here. Jacob Copeland being ran across from by Tyreek Stevenson and then Stokes, of course, on the outside with Trayvon Grimes. So all you're going to have here is a complete vacation. They know that if this is man coverage, the strong safety is going to go with Pitts. One of these linebackers are going to have to go with this quick hitting into the boundary wheel route once again by Malik Davis. This time it's even worse because they use the edge defender here, Jermaine Johnson, to defend it. So if you see the routes right here, uh, it's nothing but – just pretty much stuff to keep it just to keep it the coast clear over here from this side right here, like a couple of in breaking routes and stuff like that. Even Kyle Pitts, his route is an in breaking route. So the cheese is going to be made right there. Once again, hell of a play call. Immediately gets on him and he was done from the, from the jump. Look at this done from the jump. Instead of him turning to run, he tries to, I don't know what he's doing. A two hand press on Malik Davis. Malik gave him half a man ran right by his ass. You know what Kyle Trask does. Dang. That's hard. Once again, Kyle Trask doesn't even worry about anything else. He already knows where this is going. He just wants to look at the safety, see what the safety is going to do. If this is man coverage, he knows that there's going to be a clear out here from Kyle Pitts running, of course, with this in-breaking route. All he has to do is put it over the top, let Malik Davis run under it. Click killing him with the same shit over and over. That's hard. All right, so I want you to check this out real quick. Remember, every action has a reaction, and this is exactly what Dan Mullen wanted. So now you're going to see how they try to combat this, right? So they know that if they're in the boundary, so this is a tendency. If they're in the boundary right here, they have a chance to run a wheel route. And you know it, especially with a three-by-one. So you can see the different three-by-ones, how they've done this. Same shit, different applications. All right, but check this out. The edge player working out of a motorcycle stance. Able to work the flat, work hook curl and everything like that to try to combat something that's going out there. If you have that particular tendency, you can use him to help out. But guess who that is? That is the best edge player for Georgia, a guy who can get after the sack, get after the with some sacks a little bit better and look how they use him, right? He's not worried about getting a sack now. He's worried about that wheel route. So you take him out of the play, now you have a three-man rush. Perfect. All right, cool. You don't want that? Then we could just go downfield. That's how you do it. That's exactly what he wants. Every action has a reaction. All right, last one right here. This is the ultimate tendency breaker. So now you're on the hash, and it's going to look like there's no threat of a wheel route. 
first and foremost, you have Naquan Wright on the other side. So you're not going to run a real wheel route from way over there normally, right? So you would think like, man, I could probably relax on that. It's not a three by one or anything like that. Actually, you're going to have jet action here by Kadarius Tony. Pretty much a, a post route here by Trayvon Grimes to clear it out. Then you're going to have Kamori Gamble doing what? Getting wheeled up the field. And you even see Aziz Ojolari, as smart as he is, he almost recognizes it as a threat crossing his face. And he kind of checks off of it a little bit, but he's like, nah, he's not going to be run running a wheel route. It's going to be up to the back if they were going to do that. So once again, the hacker <laughs> doing his thing. I love this one right here. Jet action, play action, nobody home. I want you to look at Aziz Ojolari here. Right, same same exact thing. Him on his feet, checks off of this. You can see him right there. He hits him. He's like, "All right, I'm good right there. No wheel route. Let me get after the passer here." But of course, it is a wheel route. Bang! <laughs> Come on, man. That man ain't the truth. Listen, Dan Mullen, Steve Sarkeesian, Ryan Day. These guys. These some really good coaches out there as far as the offense goes. Where guys were able to adjust in game. I absolutely love it. These guys are on top, as at least as of right now. We shall see later on or whatever like that, but make sure you pay attention to those guys. But I wouldn't take anybody over Dan Mullen. That's just me, though. I think Dan Mullen is that damn good. So we shall see. But let me know in the comment section what you think about this. Georgia had no answer for it, and I can't wait to see them match up again next year to see uh, what Dan Mullen comes, with, comes up with. And I want to see Kirby Smart adjust as well. Kirby Smart needs to take control of his own defense because I know damn well if he were the guy that was running it, I don't know. He is the guy, so it's his team, so the responsibility falls on him no matter what happens. So they should have adjusted to this a little bit better. But it is what it is right there. It's your boy Murphy, the Underground King. Peace. What more can I say? Top billing. Top.